Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharti and we are back with Rack and Wrap Up and this time we are wrapping up AWS reInvent. It has been a crazy week. They have not only <laughs> released so much information that it's hard to go through it and there was also an outage, very bad outage that took a lot of things down with them. So that may also make companies reconsider putting all of their eggs in uh, one Amazon basket. So, uh, well, let's talk about um, what has been your kind of perception so far from these announcements or where do you see things are heading? I mean, they have made a lot of open source announcements and other things, so talk about it. Yeah, there's there's so many flavors of how Amazon is continuing its take over the world strategy. Uh, you know, this is very significant numbers of announcements. In some ways, what they're they're looking at from a strategy is they're just trying to create the appearance that they are so far ahead that there is no point in catching up. You know, this is the, part of this is is the overwhelming force strategy, right? Reinvent is not over. It's really a three week conference now. They have so much content. They're going to use spend three weeks on it, um, and so the big takeaway, I think, the big impression that they're trying to make is don't even try to compete with us, right? Take your toys, join us, or go home. Um, and and I think that that's you know sort of where the message ends up being centrally to that. There's a whole bunch of things to decom decompose out of what their announcements are that are really worth talking about, right? They're moving into the data centers. So, you know, I never want to hear somebody say data centers are dead. Clearly, Amazon thinks that that's their next frontier. They're announcing so becoming a software provider where, where people buy software from Amazon. Um, and they're also really deepening their capabilities on their platform. So there's a lot to unpack in, in what they're doing. Um, and I think there's some things that they're doing that are very interesting that didn't get a lot of notice. Right, and the funny thing is that the <laughs> the, there was uh, a lot of uh, marketing uh, going on around data centers are that everybody rush and run towards public cloud. And it was very strategic move, you know. So it, it, there was a case that, hey, data centers are dead and blah, blah, blah. But, but uh, you know, now suddenly data centers are becoming more important because, you know, these big hyper cloud you know, providers are also entering the area. Uh, <clears throat> they also announced uh, EKS open source. Talk about that. What, what what does it really matter? Because we have talked about earlier and you have shared your own suspicion about, okay, it's open source, but Solid Cloud is not the same software that we used to run in old days. So does it really matter? It's open source. Yeah, th that, that was a really interesting announcement because they really did open source the Kubernetes components that are behind their own Kubernetes offering. Um, and as a sidebar for this, it's really interesting they they are while they're very big on Kubernetes and and doing this work, they also have their own containerizing uh, services that are growing also very quickly. They have two other alternatives, especially with Lambda now supporting containers to Kubernetes, and so right they are they are not in a single horse race with this. They are they are fully embracing containers, but in very different ways. Uh, one of their on premises announcements with ECS, their container service, so not even the Kubernetes pieces. Um, so I, this is, this is, you know, that, that whole strategy of we're going to overwhelm you with so many, so many factors, right? I'm, I'm trying to talk about their Kubernetes offering and I'm already talking about other stuff. Um, I did look at what they did with EKS and they, they have a distro. It's not clear to me yet the type of support they would provide for that distro. Usually being a distro means that if somebody's running it themselves, they can call up the vendor and get support. And that means consulting and services and, advice on how to run it and things like that. It's not entirely clear why they're why they're doing that. Um, it could be, and I, I think that this is an important thing, is they don't want other people's Kubernetes running in Amazon if they can avoid it. So if I was Red Hat or Rancher, uh, you know, now SUSE, um, and I had a popular distro in Amazon, and all of a sudden you were telling me, hey, wait, I could run this uh, Amazon distro myself, then that is a direct threat to uh, Red Hat. And I, I think that that's smart uh, planning for them because they want to make sure that they either they run the service or they own the software and it's optimized for them. Um, so smart strategy for that. It's not clear to me yet if the market really cares that much. 
Uh, also, they also made announcements around Apple's, you know, uh, M1 chip support for Mac. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many different pieces in in here. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a, that was actually one of the few that that really surprised me. Um, and I think it's an interesting way that people are going to start looking at VDI for Mac. Uh, VDI is virtual desktop. Um, and so from that perspective, that's a very much been a Windows play. Um, this allows you to have VDIs for Mac and could let Mac really penetrate more deeply into corporate environments. Very powerful, very powerful thing. Um, not one of, that I was expecting to come. I, I do wonder if some of it's tied to the uh, ARM announcements and if they're planning for this to be an ARM story where Mac is moving to ARM, Apple is moving to ARM, um, or sorry, um, Apple and Mac are moving to ARM, and AWS uh, is really pushing the ARM um, quite heavily, um, right? There's there's a whole bunch of people who uh, should be feeling threatened after this these these announcements, and Intel is one of them. A bad week for Intel. What does this mean for Racken? For Racken, all of oh, this announcement, wow. this reinvent, yeah. Yeah, when, when we read this, you know, I get very excited when Amazon is pushing into areas that we see as um, critical critical areas for the industry. So them validating that on-premises self-managed infrastructure through outposts and through their software offerings, what they're basically doing is saying, you know what, not everything's going to be cloud. They're pushing to edge, really validates edge. Um and so these are things that, from our perspective, really validate market statements that we've been making all along and feeling very contrarian about. And yet, Amazon is now looking at that as the major beachheads that they want to go tackle. Um, so for RackN, that says we're actually providing software in the right space. The thing that's really interesting to me, RackN's strategy says customers can own their own control planes. We can manage the software. We can help customers manage the software themselves which we hear over and over and over again. Amazon's message is very different there. They are basically telling you, you're not smart enough to run the infrastructure, give it over to us, let us be the control plane. Um, and then they have major outages for, you know, they're, they're operating at scales that are unbelievable and they're going to have outages as complexity increases. We believe fundamentally people can run their own infrastructure. We help people do that. And so, it's interesting to sort of sh have Amazon continually push their control plane further and further into the field, um, and at the same time validate that people want the hardware and, uh, and infrastructure to be in the field, uh, on premises or in the edge. Um, so for us, it was very validating to continue to see their growth in these in these places. And it's worth noting, Racken is completely infrastructure agnostic, so. For us, running in Amazon is great. Running on bare metal is great. Running in virtualization is great. Um, we're about infrastructure control planes. So the more they do here, um, actually, the more opportunity it creates for us. Uh, Rob, you also said you know there was something that surprised you. What was that? So in their in their announcements, they actually announced an AI operations management platform, where they're actually looking at all of the components and configurations you've made in Amazon, and then making recommendations and advice for it. That's a it's an acknowledgement of just how hard it is to run in Amazon uh, and how much they need to do. But it's also a really powerful selling feature for Amazon. And I think their use of AI analytics and all the data that they collect to then help customers automatically improve their operations is a much more significant value add into the Amazon services than, than people realize. And, and I haven't seen a lot of chatter about that tool, but literally you can check a box and start getting operational feedback from Amazon. Of all the things from reInvent, that's the one I sent to my CTO because that's the place where we are actually taking things to the next level in operational capability. Um, and I thought that was a really significant add-in uh, to those announcements that slipped under people's radar. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for, for kind of unwrapping uh, reInvent. And uh, hopefully we should do it more often. Uh, I don't know what else is left this year. I mean, uh, to be honest, a lot of events are happening, but since they have moved online, they have become just one more online thing. So it's not the same focus that physical events used to get. But thanks for talking about it. And hopefully we'll see each other this year or maybe next year. So thank you. I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to it, Swap. Thanks.